What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, I want to talk to you about uploading files in Node.js. So we're actually going to be talking about three distinct scenarios. The first one is going to be when we're uploading a file to our own local file system. Then we're going to talk about uploading a file to S3. And then we're going to talk about uploading files using Ajax. So I guess like if you're using something like Axios or Fetch, and you're actually having the uh, request happen like from your from your actual client side code. So imagine you're building some kind of you know single page application like React or Angular, and you're using something like Axios or Fetch. How would you do it in that case? And that's a little bit different than how you would do it normally with server side rendering. So I'm going to show those three scenarios. So the first thing we have to do to get started is to actually install. Oh, I should also mention before I actually do anything, you can find um, starter files with all the necessary, necessary boilerplate to get started in my description box below. You'll find the link to the GitHub repo as well as a link to a code sandbox. So if you don't actually want to clone or download any files, you can just go right to that sandbox and you can just get up and running rather quickly. So first thing we need to do is install a uh, library called Multer. I'm using Yarn. If you want to use NPM, that's totally cool. And once we have that installed, we have to go ahead and require it. Require it. So we're going to say const Multer is equal to require Multer. So this is the library that's actually going to help us deal with all the file uploads. Now, once we have that installed, we have to do a little bit of setup. So I'm going to paste some code in here from my notes. And I'm going to walk through it line by line to tell you exactly what each line basically does. So what we're doing is we're creating a storage object. Um, and the way that we're doing this is we're calling the multer.disk storage. So effectively, we're, we're creating, we're, we're effectively telling multer that we want to store to our, our actual local um, file system. And there's a couple of things that we have to also teach multer how to do. So for instance, we have to tell it exactly which folder we want to go to. So, that, so that's what kind of this destination section here is all about. We're basically telling it that we want it to go to our public folder that we have right over here. And then we're actually teaching it about file names because we want to we want to kind of make sure that we're you know because I think by default what happens is Multer will save the file name as is the same way that it's coming in. So for instance, if you have like um, if you have like an image on your computer that's going to be simply called you know myimage.png or whatever, it'll store it exactly that same way. But you wouldn't necessarily want to do that because you know what happens if you have two users that are uploading the same image and they have the same name? It can kind of get a little confusing. So the best practice is to typically create distinct names for each individual image. No two images in, across your system should ever have the same name. And so that's kind of what I'm doing within file name, and that's where you that's what file name is all about. How to teach Multer how to you know what name to use as the file is getting stored. And so what I'm really doing is I'm using the field name, which will make more sense in just a moment. Then I'm using date that now, which is the timestamp and then parts of one really is just me trying to get the uh, extension. So really quickly, what um, parts looks like is basically an array. So the mime type, actually, let's talk about the mime type. The mime type looks a little bit something like a string that looks like this. It'll be uh, basically image slash PNG. And given the fact that I just want to have the PNG so I can do the dot PNG right over here, I'm actually splitting on the mime type at the slash. And I've got an array where image is the first element in the array and PNG is the second element in the array. So here I'm basically saying give me parts of one, which is effectively going to give me the PNG. So I can now do, you know, field name plus the date dot now dot parts of one, which is going to be the PNG. And that's really all that's doing. So we've created the storage object. We're telling it where to store it, how to save our file names. Now we actually have to take this and hook this back into Multer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this object called upload, which is going to be given to us by the Multer sort of constructor function, if you will. So we're going to call the Multer function right here, and then we're going to pass it an object, and then we're going to tell it, you know, where we want the storage to go. So we've created the storage object, and now we have to pass this to the Multer constructor function, which then in turn gives us this upload object that now has... I guess you can call it sort of the Multer instance, as you just saw. That's actually a pretty good way to put it. So thank you, VS Code, for putting that in my brain. We can use the Multer instance to actually start using our configurations to actually upload files wherever we told it to go. So let's actually make that happen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create an endpoint. Uh, so we're going to say app.post. We're going to go ahead and get. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and say. Okay. So now we need to actually create an endpoint where we're going to actually save our files. So let's go ahead and create a method or an endpoint. We're going to go ahead and say uh, save image. So in other words, we're going to making a post request to save image. And the first thing we're going to pass here is this upload.single. So this is the actual upload um, instance that we're getting from Multer. And then on it, it has a method called single, which basically says we're going to be uploading only one image. You can, of course, also use an array. Um, I'm just going to be showing the, the uh, scenario where we're just uploading the one image at a time. And then we have to pass in the name of the field. So this will make more sense in a moment once we get to the HTML side. But basically, um, if you have like an input and you're giving it a name, that name has to match up with whatever you're passing into this uh, function here, upload.single. 
And then finally, we can create our, we can actually pass our own regular method handlers. If you're familiar with Express, you've already seen this many times. And so we're just going to say rec and res. Now, basically, what's going to happen is this is this is a simple middleware chain. As a request comes in to save image, the first thing that's going to happen is upload single is going to get called. It's going to do whatever it does to actually parse the image out and store it wherever we told it to store it. And then it's going to actually take some, you know, data about said image and apply that to the rec object. So, but, so that therefore, by the time we get into our own method handler, the rec object will have some information about what our image, um, you know, where it is, what the name is, and so on and so forth. And this can be exceptionally useful because especially in our case, what we're really trying to do is once the image has been stored, you want to actually go ahead and send that back to the browser from where it comes. In other words, from exactly where it's been stored. So I've just pasted some code in that basically does just that. We're basically saying res.send file, go ahead and send the file. And then send file needs to take in an actual absolute path to where the file is that you want to send. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying underscore dir name, which is basically gives me um, the current working directory and go from there, go to the public folder. And then from there, go to rec that file, that file name. And of course the typical express rec object doesn't actually have file or file name on it, but we have that now because we're already after the upload single uh, middleware function. And so therefore we have the rec that file that file name. And so this gives us the entire path to where the file actually lives. And so when we actually upload an image to, and we're going to make the post request to save image, the response back will be the actual file getting sent back to the browser and it'll then get displayed on our screens. And that's kind of the idea. So with that out of the way, we can now move on to the uh, client side code sort of, we're going to go to the form and we have to actually wire up. So this form to actually make that request back to the server. So as you can see here, I already have an input nested inside of this form. It's a type equals file and the name is equal to image, which again, very crucially, that has to match with the image that we're passing it to upload that single. And now we need to actually tell the form what to do. So the first thing is we're going to tell it to make a post request. So we're going to say method is equal to post. Finally, and then uh, not finally, the second thing we need to do is give it the action. So we're going to go ahead and say go to slash uh, save image. And now finally, the last thing that we care about is the ink type. So the ink type in this case is going to be uh, multi part form data. Now this is actually the sort of magic sauce here. When you're trying to upload any kind of file, a CSV, a PDF or an image, you want to upload it, you need to encode it with the multi part form data. Now, typically, when you're writing a node server, and you want to try to parse data out that's coming within the body from a post request, you might use something like body parser. But I don't think body parser can handle um, this type of encoding multi part form data. And that's literally where Multer comes into play. Multer's whole job is to actually parse up multi part form data, hence its name Multer. So that's kind of the idea. So it's very important if you want any of this to work to include that ink type. So once we've done all that, um, let's just make sure that the server is running. So we're going to go ahead and say yarn start. And if I did everything correctly, it should all work as planned. So what we can do is we can actually come here, choose a file. So let's just go ahead and grab the thumbs up emoji hit submit and there it is it actually works beautiful okay so we've seen how to upload files to our local file system now let's talk about what it takes to upload a file to s3 so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file called s3.js and the reason why i'm doing this is because i simply want to reserve or preserve the code that we've already written so that you can have it for later so i'm going to create a new file called s3.js then i'll go to the package.json and tell the star script that when i run it instead of running file.js go ahead and run s3.js and so from there, we have to now do two things, or actually one thing. We have to install two different dependencies. The first one we need to install is going to be the, um, uh, the AWS SDK. And then we also need to install Multer S3. Now, Multer S3 basically is Multer, except it works for S3 purposes. Um, I don't know if I did that right. Yeah, there we go. I think this is supposed to be Multer S3. Right, so we're installing the AWS SDK and then Multer S3. And really, again, all Multer S3 is, it, 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 it's because again, typically Multer expects you to work with your own local file system. And so what Multer S3 allows you to do is to basically get all the nice benefits of Multer, but use it with Multer S3, right? Okay, so with that out of the way, we're gonna go to the S3 file and I'm gonna be pasting in just a bunch of code for my notes. And the reason why I'm doing this is because most of the code is the same and I'm just gonna kind of highlight the ones that are different in terms of S3. So again, really just basically building up a simple express app. We're gonna be requiring Multer. But now you can also see two additions here. We're requiring Multer S3 and then we're also requiring a, uh, the AW, AWS from our AWS SDK, right? So here's something that we now start doing that's again different besides the imports. We're actually instantiating the S3 object by actually newing up the S3 object from the AWS SDK. And in order to do that, you have to pass it the credentials that you wanna use in order to connect to your S3 account. So typically you'd have something like an access key or a secret key. For me, I've actually hidden this in my .env file because I didn't wanna expose that of course in the video, but you can typically create a user in the IAM section and then you can grab the credentials 
your secret access key and then your access key ID, just pop them in here and you'll be good to go, right? The next thing we need to do is we need to actually create this upload object, which is not at all different than how we did earlier in the file. Um, in the, you know, in the case of simply um, uploading to your own local file system, the difference there was I kind of broke it out into two steps and here it's kind of done in one step, but the, the, the fundamental idea is the same. We're basically just, you know, instantiating the Multer constructor. We're creating a new instance called upload. And in order to create this instance, we kind of have to create a storage configuration. So here, instead of the configuration being, you know, typical disk storage so that it gets saved on your own local file system, we're actually going to be using the Multer S3 package that we've just installed to tell Multer that we want to actually go ahead and save it to S3. Now, in order to do that, it needs a little bit of configuration. The first thing is, of course, S3. to Tell it, you know, which S3 instance to use in order to actually be able to communicate with the AWS SDK and then, you know, using the AWS APIs. Second thing is which bucket you want to go ahead and save it to. So presumably you'll have some kind of bucket that you've already created in your account under the S3 um, you know, platform. And then whatever name of that bucket is, whatever bucket name you want to use, just pop that in right over there. And then the content type, you literally just want to use this Multer S3 auto content type. And this basically will handle the ability to figure out all on its own what the content type of your upload is, which is just really nifty. It allows you to, for instance, I was actually running into an issue where I was trying to upload a file to S3 and then I was trying to view it in the browser, but instead of actually getting viewed, it would just automatically download. And so after doing a little bit of research, it turns out that the reason why was the reason why that was happening is because I didn't actually save the image with the correct content type. So, so in order for me to save it with the correct content type, of course, that may vary from the different things that I may be uploading, whether it's a file or if it's an image, I can just use the auto content type. So now the browser knows what to do with it automatically because it's been saved accordingly. And then finally, the last thing is key, which is very, very similar to what, you know, uh, the file name was in the last section right over here. So if you come here, this file name, we're just teaching uh, Multer how to name the files. So here we're kind of telling Multer, you know, how to save the file in, you know, what the name should be when it's actually getting uploaded to S3. So this is because S3 basically uses keys as names. And so once again, it's just going to be a timestamp and then we're going to do a two string on it. And then finally, the last bit of configuration is just going to be the ACL which is just a sort of we're locking down the sort of accessibility rights or the, the sort of privacy rights to, to this uh, object that we're saving. In other words, we want it to, to be you know, publicly accessible. Do we want people to be able to read, read it only or write it and stuff like that? So in this case, I've simply done you know, uh, just public read, so therefore anybody can read it, but you can't, of course, mutate it or do anything like that to it. And then the last thing we need to do is this is really pretty much exactly the same as it was before. We're just creating a simple post route that's going to go to slash save image. Once again, we're going to call the upload.single um, so this will basically, again, this image here will match the name that we have here um, in the file. Uh, in other words, the name of this file input will match what we pass into upload.single. Then we have our own method handler, which will accept the rec and the res. And then here, the one thing that we're doing differently is because the actual file, the rec object, will include some metadata about the file. We're actually going to take that metadata, and what we're going to do is we're going to tell Express to do a redirect to the rec.file.location, which the location is literally going to be the exact URL plus the bucket name plus the image name to where this exact image is stored on S3. So then we can actually tell the browser to, you know, make a request to that URL so we can actually see it in the browser. So that's pretty much all the code that's necessary in the, um, in the, from, you know, as far as the server side is concerned, the client side code doesn't actually have to change. So assuming, assuming that we did everything correctly, we can just go ahead and start up the code and start up the server, go ahead and go to the browser, choose a file. We'll just choose the wave PNG hit submit. And if it all went correctly, we should of course see it in the browser. And as you can see here, the URL that we went to is the name of the bucket, .s3 Amazon AWS com, and then the actual name of the file, which is of course just a timestamp. And you can see it just displays directly in the browser, so all is working perfectly. Okay, so we've seen what it takes to upload a file to S3. We've seen what it takes to upload a file to our own local file system. Now let's talk about what it takes to upload a file using Ajax. So that therefore, when you're trying to build some kind of single page application using something like React or Angular and you're using something like Axios or Fetch to upload your files, you can still do that successfully. So first thing we're going to do, just as we did before, we're going to be creating a new file and we're going to call this one ajax.js. Uh, we'll then go to the package of JSON to change the script to, so that it actually starts running the uh, ajax.js file. And then the interesting thing here is that we can pretty much grab any one of these if we want to save it to S3, if we want to save it to our own local file system. It doesn't matter because here that's not the focus. We're just trying to see what it takes to you know upload the file using Ajax. So I'll just grab the uh, build or the setup that we have for saving it locally, and I'm going to paste that in here. And pretty much everything is going to be the same except for the one key difference. We're now no longer going to be sending the physical file back. Rather, we're just going to treat this as more of like an API. So what we're, what we'll do is we're going to say res.status. 
um, we're going to send back a status code of a 201 and then we're going to send back JSON and we're going to say that the path is equal to rec dot file dot file name. Right. So once again, we have access to this because we're holding after the upload um, that single middleware function. So now we actually have the file name already attached to the rec. And so here we're basically doing nothing different than we did in the other in the other scenarios. The only thing different is that instead of sending the file back, we're simply sending the JSON back. So we actually, or you know, we're basically just sending back a JSON object that has a key called path, whose value is the actual file name. And this file will be stored in our own local file um, folder called public. And that's pretty much all the change that we need to do for the you know server side code. Most of the work here will actually be happening in the client side code. So if we move on over to the HTML file, you'll see that we already have the image tag here. And we also have the script tag that's been commented out. So we can bring that script tag back in and we can move on over to the script tag and I'll grab my code for my notes, pass this in, and then we can kind of walk through this line by line and see exactly what it's doing. So first thing I'm actually doing is I'm actually uh, attaching an event listener to my form. Um, and I'm basically saying, listen out for the submit event. And when that happens, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and say, e that prevent default. Because of course, typically the way that the form would behave is it would submit itself to the server. That's its sort of default behavior. I don't want it to do that. I want to handle this submission to the server now myself. I'm telling it, don't do that. Do not prevent default. Finally, after I do that, I go ahead and grab the file out of my input. Um, and now here's where the sort of uh, important bit happens. We're creating this thing called an FD, which is basically a for, stands for form data. And we're getting this from creating the, from, from calling this new form data. So we've got this form data constructor. We put the new keyword in front of it, and then we get this form data object. So what is this form data object and why is this important? Well, remember when I said earlier that the only way that any of this works is that the encoding that you're sending to the server is of type multi-part form data, right? Typically when you're making an Ajax request, you're typically sending in like application JSON, which is not going to work in the case when you're trying to upload a file or an image, right? So what you need to do is just like when you actually have the, the uh, form and you have to set the enc type to be equal to multi-part form data, here this is very easy to do because all you need to do is just attach this property to the form where you're just saying enc type is equal to multi-part form data. But when you're dealing with client set code, the only way to make that happen is to actually create your own form data. And the way to do that is really very simple. You just call this form data object, which then gives you this form data object right here that has a method called append. And then you can just append sort of key value peers. So we're going to say that for the key image, give me the value that is going to be equal to that file. And it's going to get sent down to the server as form data. And once again, this image here has to match up with the image that we have set to upload single because that is ultimately going to be the field name. And from there, it's all pretty straightforward with just making a basic Axios request, which I already have Axios in the in this project uh, because I've included the CDN here in this HTML page. So if you have my starter files, then you already have it. And then making a basic Axios request, I just need to change the URL to go to slash uh, save image. We're making a method, the post, it's going to be a method of post, of course. And then the data or the body will be this form data object that we've just created. Then really all that happens is once this request is resolved, we come into our dot then, we grab the image tag that we already have in the HTML page, and we say that the source will be equal to the res.data.path. And if it all went well, we should have this file. Uh, we should all have, we should be able to see the image um, directly in our screen after we've uploaded. So let me just make sure that it's running the correct file. It seems like it's running um, ajax.js, perfect. So let's come here. Let's grab a file. We're gonna grab the face palm this time, hit open, hit submit, and there it is on the screen. And we've done all this with clients at code. The entire page does not have to reload. It's all staying in the same page. This is kind of like single page application ask, just like you'd be doing it with the React or Angular. And it all happens really very simply with the power of using this form data object, assuming that you have Mulder on the server. So of course, the biggest trick here, the biggest key is to actually use Mulder on the server so that we can actually parse out the multi-part form data. But that's only sort of one side of the equation. You have to, of course, make sure that you're actually sending in the form data from wherever you're making that request. So if you're doing it as a typical server-side request, it's really just as simple as setting the enc type to multi-part form data. Otherwise, if you're doing it from client-side code, you have to manually build up this form data object, which is really very trivial because all you got to do is just say const whatever you want to call the variable is equal to this form data. You get this form data object, and then you can append on it as many keys and values as you want, and then go ahead and make your basic post request to your server like you've done a thousand times in every React and Angular application you've ever built until now. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please do leave a like and then subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot and I look forward to seeing you next week in another video.